one. The right stuff. Hey, man, you've like broken it now. All the ants have run away. You've like debugged it. Why is it everyone else toddles off to heaven or hell and you two get to hang around here? Chucky, 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 chuck, chuck, chuck. I'm stuck. Stuck, stuck, stucky. You can't leave. I mean, you're dead, but not gone before. You're haunting. No, death hasn't come for us yet. Left us floating here, he did. Chucky can't leave the guild all stones and mortar. Not even for sures. Sures? What's yours? Oh, a pint of lager and roast boar crisp, thanks. Oh, chucky, 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 chucky. You're right. You are the ghost of old jokes. Look, I'm afraid I have to be somewhere else. Now pay attention. Hmm. Attention, yes. You said that you have to haunt the stones and mortar of the guild. Guild, yes. Well, is there any reason why you have to stay here? I mean, if the stones are moved, then you can move with them. You could just hop into one of the rocks and I could take you somewhere more interesting. Interesting, yes. Are you listening to me? No. Oh, ho, ho. chucky, 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 chucky. Just get into the damn stone. Ho, ho, chucky, chucky, chucky.
wandering shop. No one knows why. But all the most truly mysterious and magical items are brought from shops that appear and, after a trading life even briefer than a double glazing company's, vanish like smoke. They can turn up wherever there's a suitable stretch of blank wall. But once there, they have always been there. Dust and grime and a general worn look instantly dispel any doubts in the minds of people who may have walked down that same street every day for a year without noticing it. There are three general theories to explain the phenomenon of wandering shops. One, many thousands of years ago, there evolved somewhere in the multiverse a race whose single talent was to buy cheap and sell dear. Two, they are the creation of a sympathetic fate, charged with the role of supplying exactly the right thing at the right time. Three, they are simply a very clever way of getting around the various Sunday closing acts. All these theories have two things in common. They explain the known facts and they are completely and utterly wrong. Just what I've always wanted. I don't suppose I can have it then. Why not? It's yours. You only had to ask. That looks nice. Can I have it then? Certainly. What? No mumbo jumbo? No sudden insistence that I go on a special quest or anything? What? Me? Order a princess about? Whatever are you thinking? Looks interesting. Could I possibly have it then? Certainly. Nope, can't reach them. I better ask her first anyway. Candles, excellent. These should do the job nicely. Candles? You do candles? Yes, Your Royal Highness. I make them by hand. Well, I would make them by hand, but everyone just uses continual light spells these days. I don't really stock candles anymore. Those are just display models made out of plaster. But you could make me some if you had the chance. Oh, yes, love. I just need you to bring me the raw materials. Now, your grade A candle, that's made from dead whales. We used to use their nasal hairs, but these days a true pure white candle is made from spermaceti. Where does that come from? I never dared ask, love. Anyway, the next best thing is beeswax. Beeswax, right. We used to have a lovely bee milking parlour out the back. The bees insisted it was the only way to get the job done. Every evening, we'd round up the bees and settle them down in little chairs, give them all a newspaper and let them wax away to their heart's content. Then someone pointed out that all we had to do was open up the hive and scoop out all the wax we want. The little buzzers had been having us on all along. You just can't trust a bee, can you? That's just what I always say, Your Royal Highness. Oh, stop it. Be seeing you then. Yourself popcorn, just add heat and butter, and maybe a frying pan. Also serves as catapult ammunition. 
or excellent fishing sinkers. Come and get it while it's still in stock. Only one previous owner. I'm letting it go for less than mark price, and that's cutting me own throat. Popcorn! Oh, no. Hey, don't knock me back until you've seen the goods, sir. Smashing stuff. Fine popping grains lovingly swept from the warehouse floor. Why's he got little rat's hairs mixed up all through it? <laughs> Just keeping the grains warm, sir. An added extra and no additional charge. Oh, all right then. Anything to keep you quiet. Popcorn! Is this all your life has to offer? I thought you might have, well, you know, improved yourself. Reached for higher goals. I'm reaching, Gav, I'm reaching. Matter of fact, I'm going into clickies. Clickies? Just what Ank Morpork needed, eh? Exactly. Yeah, for you, irony means sort of like iron, doesn't it? <sighs> so we're into clickies now, are we? At last, the monkey has found the banana plantation. Yep, moving pictures. Here, have a read of this. Clickies. Oh, now there's romance for you. Hot dogs, popcorn, drink stands, the merry rumble of candy rolling down the aisles. And the shows. Don't forget the actual clickies themselves. What? Oh, oh yeah, I mean the shows go without saying. Chocolate dipped ice cream, novelty drinking cups, collectible lobby cards. I don't believe this. You mean to tell me that art has to take a second place to cheap licensing and marketing? Well, I can tell you that I'm above that sort of thing. Catch me being involved in some damn licensing scam? Ha! Fat chance. The last thing I'd ever do is allow myself to become involved in a shabby marketing ploy designed to use a famous name to sell a product which is in itself utterly devoid of any real... Mm. Right. Well, good luck with the career and I'll be off. Uh, did we mention the range of pewter figurines and exciting t-shirts this time? Shh! Popcorn! Hmm. Be a clicky director in ten easy steps. Make a clicky about your favourite subject. Dibbler Direct will show you how. A brochure about do-it-yourself clickies. What in the world are you? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, I didn't understand a word of that at all. Sorry. Hey there, sir. Hey there. What can I cook for you? We got the meals for one and all. A fixed price menu and everything come with a pickle. What's on the menu? Oh, uh, mice, sir. Mostly mice. Ethnic dwarf cuisine, sir. I got them baked, I got them glazed, I even got them on a stick. Mice? You mean you're dishing out rodents? Not just any old mice, sir. Big, fat ones. Prime squeakers, sir. Good pink noses, no finer in Ankh-Morpork. Park. What makes you say that? Operation of the jaw. Tongue and vocal cords, sir. And then the words just fly out. Oh, sorry, you meant the food. Very select rodentia, sir. And hygienically prepared, sir. 
Rodents hygienically prepared? How? I always wash my hands after touching them, sir. Fair enough. Can't say fairer than that. All right, then. One extra rare mouse burger. Right, sir. Hey, I think I can hear one of the little squeakers now. <laughs> there you are, sir. Extra rare. to let her get the beauty sleep she so obviously needs. Barkeep, I'll have a pint of Winkle's extra flatulent, my good man. Uh, uh, uh? Down here, oi! I said I'll have. Oi, come back here! Don't you know who I am? I am Casenanda, the second greatest lover who ever lived, and the ladder salesman extraordinaire. Come back! Charles head? Well, the one saving grace is the loss of the poor fellow's cranium probably didn't interfere with his thinking. <laughs> so, what does the world's second greatest lover do with his time? Oh, I'm always looking for fresh challenges, sir. I look at it as my duty to bring a romance and step ladders into the lives of beautiful women everywhere. This ladder of yours? Ah, the finest ladder in all of the disc. The old equalizer, you might say. It allows the lover of a reduced altitude the opportunity to kiss his lady on the cheek instead of on the... That's... that's quite enough of that. Now look, I need a ladder. Can you get me one? No, no, I only have one. And I need it for my uh, romantic adventures. Introduce me to a beautiful woman, closer to the ground. A wild woman, a fair and beauteous flower. <laughs> and the ladder shall be yours. I hope it comes washing wear. I found your perfect woman, I think. Or, to put it more accurately, I have found your greatest challenge. She's over in the mortuary. You mean that she's dead? She doesn't seem to think so. Hey, that's good enough for me. What'll 
it be lady? Greetings to you, my good man. And who might you be? Uh, uh, who? You. I'm asking you what your name is. Who are you? I'm fine, thank you. Amazing, isn't it? In any other city, you'd be mayor by now. Just tell me what alcohol you have to drink. And by that, I mean something which neither eats through the glass bottle, serves as host to a colony of sentient protozoa, or ends me up in any obscure, farcical little problems with chaos theory and butterflies. Yeah, oh, uh, that's all we've got. Protozoa. They're only little protozoa. Ciliate or non-ciliate? Uh, I, I think they're mostly rotifers. Brilliant. He can't tie his shoes, but he can classify microorganisms. There's one for the education system. All right, give me one very alcoholic drink, complete with sentient rotifers. You want I should make it look pretty with a couple of little amoebas on a stick? All right, whatever. <sighs> and they say the art of cocktail mixing is long dead. Alcohol soaked corn. This should give something a decent hangover.
Is it? Oh, I haven't been outside. Hello there. Nice day, eh? What? How dare you? Look, I believe you're fouling up this whole conversation. What do you mean, how do I do it? I just don't believe the hash you're making of a simple conversation. How are you managing to do it? Ooh, yes, that's what I am. Why does it show? She's talking like she already knows what I'm going to say. Is she a clairvoyant? Well, it's nice to start all over again. I'm sorry about all that. Sometimes I forget I've left it on, you see. Hello there! Oh, damn it, we're back here again. Eh? Oh, sorry, I forgot to turn my precognition off. There we are. That should be much easier. Psychic, eh? Well, who'd have thought it? You did, dear. About three minutes from now. Do you really get away with all this? Just pretending to read other people's thoughts for a living? Well, it's not as if I'm making money at it. Ask most people to cross your palm with silver and they look at you like you're some sort of beggar. The only fringe benefit these days is the ectoplasm. Ectoplasm? What do you use that for? Never you mind. Where does ectoplasm come from, anyway? You can wring it out of spirits if you can catch them. Squish it out of them like ringing laundry. See you later. I'd better ask her about buying it. Quite well, thank you. Well, go on, ask it. I get a migraine if you don't ask the right questions once the answers have come. Hello, Mrs Cake. How are you? That's better. Might I borrow that genie bottle you have on the shelf up there? I'll tell you what. You can have the bottle, but only if you get me some nice, fresh ectoplasm. Ugh, ectoplasm? What? That stuff that drips down walls? Sort of ghostly goo? That's the stuff. Nice and slippery. Why don't the wallpaper get all sticky? That's what the punters want these days, dear. They don't think you're a proper psychic unless there's ectoplasm sloshing all over the place. Well, that's it for now. to make spirits?
cable up with them beaters, sir. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <clears throat> uh, uh, I said, do please keep away from the bees. They're very dangerous. You need the right equipment, see? A veil, smoke, that kind of thing. Oh, come on, they're not that dangerous, are they? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Last fellow here who tried to mess with that hive ended up stung, bewitched, and turned into the helpless love slave of the Bee Queen. Really? As the gods judge me, sir, he was off there collecting pollen day and night just for the privilege of seeing her mandibles crease up in a smile, sir. Awful. Oh, God. Yes, sir. The, uh, the pollen made me sneeze something awful. I think at this point I should, uh, <clears throat> buzz off. Keep up with them there, sir. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <clears throat> uh, uh, I said, do please keep away from the bees. They're very dangerous. You need the right equipment, see? A veil, smoke, that kind of thing. Oh, come on, they're not that dangerous, are they? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Last fellow here who tried to mess with that hive ended up stung, bewitched, and turned into the helpless love slave of the Bee Queen. Really? As the gods judge me, sir, he was off there collecting pollen day and night just for the privilege of seeing her mandibles crease up in a smile, sir. Awful. Awful the degradation he got put through, sir. Oh, gods, it must have been horrible. Yes, yeah, sir. The, uh, the pollen made me sneeze something awful. I think at this point I should, uh, <laughs> buzz off. Look, I'm afraid I have to be somewhere else. Look, here's something that may interest you. You seem to know all about bees. Why don't you make a clicky about them? You could then pass on all your knowledge, so to speak. Mmm, you don't say. You know, you may just have something there. It's time the world knew the facts about bees. <laughs> Me some candles, please. Certainly, my dear. There we are, dribbly candles. Just suitable for consorting with loathsome horrors from beyond the shrieking nightmares of mortal man. Here. What you planning, Your Highness? You're not trying to put one across on your husband or something, I hope. Look, I keep telling you I am not a princess. And I am not engaged in in summoning evil entities from beyond. We've got plenty of demons running around the university in any case. Mostly they study law. Law? 
Why law? It's the wizard's fault, really. Everyone keeps saying that they want a demon to do their will. Hmm. Too much setup and not enough joke there, I feel. Excuse me, I think I have to leave. A suffragista. Ah, oh, now that's what I like about modern times. A woman is free to take her place, stride boldly forth, and get totally ignored just like all the rest of us. Another one. Go find your own grave, you rotten fool. Windle? Windle? Gad, that's my private name. Ah, oh, you still remember, lad? Oh, great days they were. Great days. Life? Pfft, you don't know what life is until you're dead. It was great, all that breathing and... Walking around in the fresh air, oh, I tell you, if I had my time all over again, I wouldn't reincarnate. So, uh, how are you adjusting then? Oh, I'll never get used to this grave, I'll tell you. The walls are so thin. All you can do here is lie around and listen to what the neighbours say. So, what's it like? Being dead, I mean. Oh, I've had enough of it. The hours are too long for a start. Here, keep the wretched dead and alive hole. Wait! What am I supposed to do with a grave? Use it as a small swim pool, huh? I can't swim. I never said you had to fill it with water, did I? Yikes and away! Right. Well, it looks like I have a real mission then. I either restore death to his rightful place, or else we'll be up to our armpits in gaunt, dark-eyed young gothic girls dressed in black, all pretending that they can quote romantic poetry. Actually, that doesn't sound bad at all. Nah. Onward! and see how this game one just must continue. you again. He says, hello, how are you? And shouldn't you be getting a move on and get death back on his feet? That's very clever. Where did you come from? You'd have to ask my mother and father. They never tell me. <laughs> That's just a familiar little joke. Yeah, a very familiar little one. That's just a little bit of sarcasm. You just wait until I get my own body back, young man. I'll give you sarcasm. Yeah, take it and choke. 
smell. I wonder if I'll ever be able to shake it off. Four cubic centimetres of mouse blood. Should I collect it myself or should I consult with a very small vampire? Suit yourself. Look, where should I? When that it's see pure go well. Shame. Much blood? Uh, how exactly? No, no, never mind. Some things are best left unknown. Here you are, one vile stench. What's this then? Looks more like a genie in a bottle. You'll get a lot more than you wish for if you open it. Dust for your perusal. Ah, right you are, my boy. Excellent. We'll make a junior apprentice wizard out of you yet. But I'm already an assistant wizard, third class. The day is still young. Here we are, genuine dribbly candles. And it wasn't only the bees that sweated getting these. Hmm. Not strictly necessary, but I suppose they'll look nice. Look at this. Sticks. Three there are, all exactly alike. Precisely as specified. Ooh, very good. What did you do then? Just go and get some sticks from the garden? Well, I never. Well, obviously you did. Right. Well, that's it then. Oh, that's three sticks of wood, four cc's of mouse blood, glitter, stench and dribbly candles. Really? What for? For the right of Ash Kent. You, you, you said we needed it. I spent ages getting the right stuff. Ooh, I don't think so. For that one, you need to open the book, light the bell and ring the candle. Or was it light the book, open the bell and ring the candle? Something like that. Is off you go. We need a candle, a book and a bell. 
You're not serious, are you? Of course not. I just love watching the pathos crossing your helpless little face. <laughs> Come on, let's get these sticks and dribbly candles and do this Ashkent thing, shall we? Dictatorship of the proletariat? What? The dictatorship of the proletariat. That results as an inevitable reaction against repression. Look, look, I think this would work better if everyone just got back on track. It's time we acted with a little bit of class. Class, that was it. The word was class. Uh, what word? Um, I don't know. I'm sure it was important. What was? How long have you been here, then? Since the banana. Will this take long? I'm on holiday. It's good here. Sun, sheep, sand, hats with corks. No worries. I'm supposed to have a chunder in a minute. A chunder? What's a chanda? You know, I'm not sure, but it sounds interesting. Now look here, you. This city is in chaos. I mean, how dare you go swanning off to foreign lands while we're up to our armpits in undead? Now you, you get right back here and get back to work. Work? I don't remember any work. All I remember is a great big bang. Then, an eternity of beer. And no worries, mate. Lucky blighter. Now I've had about enough of this. You, you get off that finger me, get those corks out of your hat, and... What? Now, 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 just you come back here. I have a plan. Oh, no. Rincewind, lad! How wonderful to see you looking so, so well, so, so very sprightly, so very, shall we say, so very mobile. You want me to go find out where death has gone? Oh, only if you don't want to spend the rest of your life staring out across a pond at all the other toads. Frogs? If you prefer. If we had a proper union like the alchemists do, I'd have a few harsh words for you. Uh, like, uh, dictatorship of the, uh... Oh, shut up. 